Hey everyone, Jason here, digital marketing consultant, and in this sales funnel guide, we are going to go A to Z and everything in between to setting up your sales funnel using 100% free software, and we'll even be able to automate the payments, whether you're doing a product or a service, and automate the delivery of digital products. So timestamps below, because you can tell this is a long one, along with some other helpful links and guides to building your funnel. So let's go ahead, jump right in to the funnel that we are going to be building building for free using Mailer Lite. So this is a diagram of the entire funnel process, but we're actually going to skip the traffic side for now because in this video it would be three times as long and nobody needs that. So what we're going to do is set up a landing page, a thank you page, then we'll set up an automated sequence to deliver our lead magnet, and then of course drive traffic to our sales presentation or sales message. We'll have to make that sales page and then either link that sales page to a shopping cart or we'll actually be able to use MailerLite and Stripe to collect the payments right then and there and then create a sequence where we deliver our digital products or you can use something like Wave, Teachable, or Thinkific if you don't want to use the Stripe integration. So lots of different ways to collect payments and of course deliver your products or services. We'll go through all those timestamps below and I'd be remiss if I didn't quickly, just a friendly reminder as a, as a marketer, I always have to do this, is to make sure that you have a clear picture of who your ideal customer is. We're not gonna take a deep dive into it here, link in the cards in the description to a data-driven method, but ju just remember when you try and write copy for everyone, you wind up connecting with no one and all the software in the world isn't going to help your funnel convert better. It's the copy and making sure you understand who your ideal customer is. And so link in the cards in the description to a video that walks through that. And if you don't already have a lead magnet for your sales funnel, I'll also link up in the cards in the description to a video that goes through a bunch of different great lead magnet examples and ideas ideas and a Canva tutorial on how to put together great looking lead magnets inside of Canva. Because after all, no one's going to enter their contact information on your landing page unless the lead magnet is valuable and it actually looks helpful. So let's go ahead and talk about the landing page because this is the first page that we're going to build inside of MailerLite for this particular tutorial. And there are a couple elements that I recommend having on your landing page. So here's a mock example of the landing page that we're going to be building. And there are a couple key elements that you need to have on your landing page, irrespective of what type of design you go with. Personally, I like this design. I'll show you some of our conversion rates in a moment to prove that simple designs like these really do work. And all of our landing pages use something called the ADA framework. That is attention, interest, action, and desire. And you want all four of those elements on your landing page to maximize your conversions. So I'll link up in the cards in the description to a video that jumps through all the, goes through all that copywriting. Here, we're just gonna jump into MailerLite. But before we do, just in case you're looking at that landing page going, there's no way that converts very well. Here's some live conversion rate data from our own MailerLite account. As you can see, these pages aren't necessarily getting hundreds of thousands of conversions, but the thousands that they have gotten, it have done very, very well. So let's go ahead, jump into MailerLite and actually start building out your landing page. So inside of MailerLite, if you don't already have an account, you can click on the link in the description. It is an affiliate link. So if you do decide to upgrade your plan, we do receive a small commission as a way to help support this channel and the creation of long videos like this one, because they kind of cost a lot. So once you're inside of MailerLite or you've gone through and you've applied, I don't recommend MailerLite for affiliate marketing, we can come up here to sites and then we'll be able to create a landing page. Now, even with the free plan, you have up to five landing pages. So you'll, you'll be able to build a fully functioning funnel, even if you don't decide to upgrade to the $10 a month, I think, for their full suite of landing page capabilities. So we'll go ahead and click on create landing page. And for the name, I recommend just naming it whatever your lead magnet is. We'll use a very similar name throughout the rest of your funnel. So I'll go ahead, click on save and continue here. And in the next step, what we're going to need to do is create a new group. So we need to tell MailerLite when someone enters their contact information on this landing page, what group should they be added to? So we'll go ahead and click on add group here and go ahead and give it the exact same name. We gave the landing page, that way it's very easy. Um, you'll see later on through, this, <laughs> through, through the screen share, ours is really messy, but that's because we keep doing these tutorials. We'll go ahead and click on create, and then we'll scroll down. We'll go ahead and select the group that we just created, and scroll down, click on save and continue here. 
and then of course it'll load. You'll get used to Mailer light loading. It's totally normal. And then they have a bunch of different templates here, as you can see, but I typically like to just start from scratch anyway. So we'll just go ahead and click on select here and we'll wait for it to load again. And then you can scroll down and see the elements. We're just going to scorch earth policy anyway. So we'll come up here to actions, click on remove content blocks, type uh, remove to confirm, and then actually remove them. And the next thing we're going to want to do is change up our background. So I'm going to scroll down here and click on background and change the body to white. And that's just because this particular template has a gray bar at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'll exit out and click on save. And then let's go ahead and change our font for the entire page. And the reason why I like doing things this way is it just saves time in the future, selecting the same font or size over and over and over again. So we'll go ahead and click on railway here and we'll just change it to one of my favorites, Lotto, and we'll call that good. Click on blocks and then we'll scroll up here to select text and you can just click and drag. And this is going to be one of our, part of our, our headline block up here. So grabbing attention. Now I recommend having all of your copy pre-written. So I'm going to jump over to my sales funnel organizer here and I'm going to copy my pre-headline. If you'd like a copy of the exact same template that we use when we create landing pages in our full funnel, I'll link up in the description to our sales funnel organizer. It's the exact same Google doc we use and it has every step in there, including some copywriting formulas for you to copy. So we'll go ahead and copy that and we'll paste it in here. We'll delete that extra space. I'll go ahead and highlight and center it. And once I've centered it, I'm going to change the text size here to 24. And then once we've done that, we'll come over here to spacing and we will actually remove um, the spacing. So we don't have a bunch of white space. You can always play with this later. For me, I just like having less space, especially because I know a lot of people are going to come to this page via mobile. And so I just don't want them scrolling a lot to get to the main call to action. So let's go ahead and save this and go back to our blocks and add another text element for, of course, our headline. So I'll come over to my sales funnel organizer here. I will copy my text and then I'll go ahead and just paste it in. And of course, we're going to want to format it now. Now you're going to see that this text gets really, really big and it's going to look very ugly. Don't worry about it because we're going to go through preview mode and I am actually zoomed into the interface right now so things are a little easy to read. So when it looks funny in a couple seconds, don't freak out. You can totally change it later. And of course, I'm talking way too much here. So let's just go ahead, align center. Let's format this and you'll see what I mean. So align, we'll go to center and then I'll click out of it. So we have our headline is centered and then I'll hover over it and click on edit here and I'm going to remove spacing again. And now I'm going to come into the heading and you'll see the font is Lotto because I said at the beginning to everything be default Lotto. And we'll go ahead and change our font color to a red. So well, I could select a red here or I could click on more colors and be really OCD and choose one of our custom red colors because it really makes a difference. Probably not. Anyway, let's go ahead and change the font to a different font style. And I recommend having more, no more than three fonts total on your page. After that, it kind of looks messy. I just like changing the font to a, the font of the headline to a different font of everything else to kind of help it stand out a little subliminally. And then of course we can up the size. And like I said, the text is going to look very, very funny. And we'll go ahead and click on save. When we see the preview, you'll see that it looks fine. We're just zoomed in and it's, and it's all over the place. Okay. And we'll click on save here. And then for some reason I messed up on these uh, screen slides for you. So let's go ahead and change the spacing again. Totally messed that up. Yeah, that won't happen to you. <laughs> and then we'll come over here to blocks and then we'll cl click on image and content. So this is going to be where we have the image of our lead magnet and our bullet points. We're not going to have our opt-in form yet. So that'll be, that will be after this. So let's go ahead and edit this element and we're going to remove the buttons and we're going to keep the text and we're going to keep the image. So we'll go ahead and click on save here. And now let's go ahead and mouse over so we can edit the image and drop in a picture of our lead magnet. So we'll click on edit here, go to browse. We'll just uh, select our lead magnet here, click on select, and then it will automatically be brought in. Now you can actually click and drag this if you'd like. It already pulled it in the right size. So I'll go ahead and leave the sizing alone. And now I need my bullet points. So I'll come over to my sales funnel organizer, link in the description, go ahead and copy that and then paste it in there. 
and I'm going to select this top text because I want it to be centered. So we'll go ahead and change the font size a little bit here, bring it up to 30, and then of course we will come over and center it. So now it's a little bigger and centered, and then we'll go ahead and increase the size of our bullet points a little bit here. So we can select all of our bullet points, we'll drop the size up to 24, so the Subheadline is 30 and the bullet points are 24 and the headline itself is 56 just in case you want to completely copy uh, what this page is going to look like and then we'll come over here to blocks and this time we're going to do image and content and again we're going to edit and remove the buttons because we don't want them but this time I'm going to come over here to settings and just remove the bottom spacing um, because I'd like this to be a little a little more spaced out at the bottom because we're actually going to put our opt-in form right here. So collecting our email right there. By the way, if you're getting some value out of this, go ahead and hit that, that like button. And then we're going to go, jump over here and edit and browse. And so what I like doing is putting a personal quote because you probably don't have a bunch of media appearances or testimonials and a lot of driving desire in people to actually opt in is creating some trust. And so the great a, <laughs> a great way to create tr trust is to put a picture of yourself. Now this is a mock image, so I'm not gonna click myself. I'm just gonna click this random stock photo and then I'm gonna click and drag to make it smaller. And of course you can change the alignment. I'll go ahead and click on save. And now I need the text for my quote. So I'll go ahead and copy our quote here and I'll paste it in. I'll select the bottom text and align it to the right. And that should be good enough. So when it comes to writing this quote, again, link in the cards in the description to a video that goes through all the sales copywriting, but you essentially just wanna talk about how you think the lead magnet is going to be valuable to them, because I'm sure you've gone to a lot of landing pages where you have no idea who the landing page was made by. And this just humanizes the marketing experience and it really does help with conversion rates by simply just putting your face there and saying, hey, I think this is going to be helpful to you. It's, there's, no, there's no ninja tricks there. It's just being honest and putting putting yourself out there a little bit. So let's go ahead and now put in the sign up form. So I'll click and drag that below. We'll move it up in a little bit here and I will click on edit and the form and you'll see that we can change the text. So I'm going to change the text to get access. Then we can click on settings, change the bottom spacing um, so it's not so spaced out here and then scroll down and click on button because that button is way too small. So the easiest way to create the, make the button bigger, really the only way, is to make the text bigger. So we'll bump the text up 25 and now the whole thing is uh, larger. Of course, you can play with the spacing on the rounded corners on the button so it can be a complete square or a little bit of a rounded square or a oval or, or pill as some people like to call it. And we can come over here to the hover color and I'm going to change the hover color to green because green means go. So click on save and then if I mouse over, you'll see that now it turns green and that's going to be the hover color when it turns green. So I'm going to come over here and click on input text because email is way too small and we'll click on that, bring the font size up to 18 click on save and we are good to go there. There's one more line of text that I recommend adding and this is just a recommendation. I'm not telling you to do this and this is not legal advice at all. You're like, what is he? what could he possibly be talking about? The super exciting part of building your landing page and that is the disclaimer text. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to jump over to my copywriter here uh, organizer and copy this text. This is not in the organizer because we're not lawyers. We physically can't give you stuff like this. So we'll go ahead and paste it in. Please don't copy from other sites as well because that is copyright infringement. Uh, I really wish we could do a video on that, but I digress. Rules are rules, right? So we'll go ahead and change this font. And this is probably the only font that we're gonna make smaller, right? And then we'll just go ahead and align center. So all that text that we, our lawyers say we have to have, right? And one last step, we'll hover over again, we'll edit it and we'll just take off the bottom spacing so it's literally right at the bottom of the page. And for background, this is optional of course if you want, we could go ahead and change the background to a light, light gray there. And we'll go ahead and exit out of that. We'll go ahead and click on save and we'll need to bring our form, form up a little bit. So we'll go ahead and click on edit, 
settings and we'll bring the bottom spacing up a little bit so it's not right right at the bottom and we'll go ahead and click on save now i did screw up with the um with the preparation here i do recommend taking the get access and actually moving it above the quote so i won't show that because i messed it up but i definitely recommend that you do that so let's go ahead and go over to the success page and once we click on success page of course the first thing we're going to do is go to actions and remove, don't mind the, the sun totally disappearing on me here. These always take longer than I think to record. So we're going to go ahead and click on remove here and then click on remove again. And now we have a nice blank page. So let's go over here to blocks. We'll drop in an image. And here I just recommend putting another image of your lead magnet. Let them know this is exactly, you opted in for this. This is exactly what we're about to get. So let's go ahead and click on edit here, if I can find my mouse, and click on browse, and we'll just select the same image of our lead magnet, click on select. We'll scroll down here, and there is a tiny three line triangle that we can click and drag and make it nice and small so it isn't all big in, in people's faces. So we'll go and just click on save there. We'll come over to blocks again, click on text, and here we're just going to let people know that they should check their email. So we'll just drop in, check your email, and we'll select it and make the font size much bigger so it's easy to read. Let's just do 30 again. And then of course we're going to align and center, then come over and bold it. So we'll get it nice and bold. And of course we can change the color. Let's go ahead and change it to red. And once we do, we can actually mouse over and click this plus button instead of, so we could come over here and grab the content block or we can click this plus button and select text. So once I've done, done that, you have another text box in here. We just want to tell people what email address we are sending the lead magnet with so that they know to check their spam folder because that happens with any email service provider. <laughs> Uh, no service provider can get around that. So we'll go ahead and select all this. Again, we're going to up the text size here. This time we're going to do 24. We'll go ahead and center it. So that's all there is to our success page. Now this is going to be a pop-up. So this is not a separate page load. So you can't add a conversion tag onto this because it's not a page. Now, if that didn't make any sense, it's totally okay. We'll talk about conversion tracking later and you could you can, uh, you can you can do that later in another video. I'll link up in the cards in the description. Okay, lots of links up there. Let's go ahead and preview. So when we click on preview, you'll get an approximation of what the landing page is going to look like. And of course you can click on mobile to see what it looks like on mobile. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here and then we'll click on save and update. Now, when it comes to your page settings, there are a couple things that you can do with the free plan. Um, you can't change the landing page URL. Uh, you have to have the paid version in order to have a custom domain. Uh, I should say you can change the URL, domain. You have to have a paid version to change the domain. Now, the favicon you actually can edit if you'd like. I do recommend doing that for time. Let's just go ahead and skip down to the bottom. Go to settings and analytics and custom code. Drop in your UA code or in your Facebook pixel. They don't have a native integration with Google Analytics 4 yet, but that's okay because Google Analytics 4, just the data stinks anyway. And if that doesn't make any sense, that's okay. You don't have to unlearn something or worry about something that, that isn't working very well. And of course, I recommend using something called Google Tag Manager dropping in codes here. So I will link up in the cards in the description to a super deep dive video that's probably just as long as this one about how to use Google Tag Manager, get, get all of those tracking codes on your site. Even if you're not running paid traffic, I highly recommend doing it. So let's go ahead and click on save and continue here. And then we can copy the URL and preview our landing page. So as you can see here, even though in the preview, it looked really, really crowded and bad, when we go to full screen and pasting the URL into our browser, looking at it full screen, you can see that none of the text looks awkwardly spaced. So it will look a lot better once it is full screen. And of course, I do recommend doing an actual live preview, picking up your phone and seeing what it looks like on your phone as well before you start sending traffic to it. And again, I made a silly mistake when putting this together. Definitely have the email and get access above the quote. 
So let's go ahead, jump over to back into MailerLite here and go over to our diagram to talk about what we've covered. So we've actually covered step one of building your funnel, which is creating the landing page and then making sure that we have a rule to add people to a list. So now it's time for your rapport sequence. This is going to be where we deliver your lead magnet and we also start sending emails to drive traffic to your sales page. So with the rapport sequence, again, I'll link up in the cards in the description, <laughs> like I've done with everything else, of a super deep dive video on what I like to call empathize, energize, and expand. And this is a very simple five email sequence to deliver a lead magnet and then drive traffic to a sales page. So again, link in the cards in the description because it's a lot of nuance when it comes to actually writing emails as well. There's a live example of how to actually write your emails in that video as well. But for now, let's go ahead and talk about the automations, the technical side of setting this up, making sure that the lead magnet gets delivered and we send out emails that drive traffic to our sales presentation. So let's jump back into Mailer Lite here. And from our landing page, we'll come over here and click on automations. So we'll click on automation, create workflow. And something I really like about Mailer Lite and Aweber actually does this too. Uh, unlike some of the other free plans out there like uh, MailChimp and ConvertKit, you can actually set up these automations on the free plan. So that's why I like doing tutorials on that. Aweber coming soon. We're just still testing. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and give a, the workflow a name. It's going to be the exact same name. We gave the landing page and the group. So it's really easy to know who goes where. And we'll go ahead and click on the workflow trigger here and when someone is added to a group. So when someone's added to a group, and we're going to select the group that we created when we created the landing page. And you can see naming it the same makes it really easy. And then we'll just go ahead and click on save. So now we have a rule. When someone enters their name and email on that landing page, they're jo they join this group. And because they join this group, this automation starts. All right. Perfect. <laughs> you can always always rewind if I'm talking too fast or I just do a really terrible job of explaining these things. I get overly excited sometimes. All right, bear with me here. Let's go ahead and click the plus button. We'll create our first email. We'll give it a subject line, something like, here's your playbook, here's your lead magnet. Well, don't say here's your lead magnet, but here's your whatever the lead magnet is, fill in the blank. Let's go ahead and design the email and we can go ahead and just choose rich text editor. I don't recommend doing any of the fancy templates that they have. We're real people sending normal emails to other real other real people. So let's just be real, I guess. Here we go. Let's go and choose. That was such a terrible, you know, what's your marketing advice? Just be real. <laughs> okay. So we'll go ahead and paste in our first email here. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. Just, hey, thanks for joining our email list. Here's the playbook you asked for. And then that's all you need to do with this email. Don't have anything else other than here's what you asked for. You asked for this. Here it is. Enjoy. That's it. That's all we got to do. So uh, we can come over here to fonts and go ahead and change it. And in this particular instance, I just like upping the size to 16 or 18, making it really easy to read uh, wherever someone is reading the email. And then we can go ahead and click on done editing. So I'm going to jump back over to our diagrams here. So we've gone from what we've essentially just done is we've gone from this step, what we did with the landing page, to now we've created a trigger and sent the lead magnet. So the landing page and lead magnet phase is complete. The Someone's entered their name and email on the landing page and we have given them what they've asked for. So now it's time to start the rapport sequence. So this is going to be anywhere from four, another four to six emails that you'll send out. So let's go jump back into MailerLite and we're going to come to the plus button and we are going to create a delay. So we'll delay, we'll choose one day. It's <laughs> okay, <laughs> I messed up again. There we go. Done is better than perfect. So uh, you'll put a one in this box and a day. So we'll go ahead and click on save here. And now we have a delay. We're going to repeat this process five times. So that's why the five is showing up. So that's step number one of the repeat of five. So here we go. We'll click plus button again. We'll click on email. Then in the subject line, we'll just say something like copy the strategy. And then we'll go ahead and click on save. And you're going to want to repeat this as many times as, as many emails as you want to send. So there'll always be a day delay, send an email, day delay, send an email. And again, these emails right now, this is your rapport sequence. So all of these emails are going to be driving traffic to your sales page or your sales presentation, which we will be building in the next step. 
So we'll go ahead and click on save here. And going back to our diagram, you'll see that we've delivered the lead magnet, we've created the rapport sequence. Now there's one more thing to do before we start talking about the sales and checkout and product delivery. And that is going to be the broadcast sequence. Because after all, not everyone's going to purchase, right? So we want to create something that's automated that automatically puts everyone who's gone through a rapport building sequence into a general list that you can email later on. So what we'll do is assume that you've done five or six, e five or six of these emails. And of course, we'll click the plus button again. And we'll add one more delay. But this time, this is going to be a delay for your broadcast sequence. And we'll go ahead and click on wait one days because I made sure not to recover or cover it up this time. We'll click on save here. And then we'll select one more time. And this time, we're going to select action. And what we're going to do is copy it to our broadcast list. And so I'll go ahead and select copy to group. And then I'll select Aspire Entrepreneur here, which is our broadcast list. And we'll go ahead and add that. And now someone will go through the sequence, we'll wait a day, and then we will copy them over to our broadcast sequence. Now the reason you want to copy and not just move is because you want to keep a record of everyone who's already gone through the sequence. Because if we, instead of selecting copy, we selected move, well, we'd get the same end result, but we would lose the tag inside of MailerLite saying they completed, they went through this sequence, which is going to be very helpful later on in your email marketing. So now we can go ahead and turn this on. It is live. So going back to our diagram, this is what we've set up so far. We have our landing page. We've delivered that lead magnet. We have a couple of rapport emails going out. And then once the rapport sequence is over, we've dropped them into the general broadcast list. And so now it's time to talk about your sales page or your sales presentation. Now, when it comes to MailerLite, MailerLite is not designed to do anything super fancy with your sales presentation. So if you're trying to do live webinars or automated webinars or some advanced automated sequence where they get video one if they click this link or video two if they click that link, this is not the, this is not the tool for that. Now, when it does come to writing sales copy, again, links in the cards in the description to some copywriting videos, I do recommend the book, The Ultimate Sales Letter by Dan Kennedy. It is really old. I mean, it's so old that it has chapters about direct mailings, which is actually still a thing just outside of the context of this type of sales funnel. But there is a lot of great resources in there. You don't need some high closer copywriter course in order to be successful with your first couple of sales letters. Amateur copy is the way to go and you'll get better at understanding who your ideal customer is. Just skip those over, super overpriced courses. Anyway, I digress. So this is going to be an example of the page we're going to create. Um, you do have actually have the ability to do a countdown timer. One of the things I like about MailerLite though is the countdown timer is real. So there's no fake scarcity here. It has to be real. And we're going to skip that for now. We're going to have a headline, of course, a video, and then the button. And we'll get to what you can do with the button inside of MailerLite. So let's jump back into MailerLite here. We'll create our landing page. And oh, I, should, I should back up. So we're going to click Create Landing Page because MailerLite doesn't have a feature for making a specific sales page. So this is the page we're going to be linking to in all those rapport building emails. So we'll go ahead and click on Create Landing Page here and I'll just give it a name and I'm going to put dash sales page so I know that this is a sales page. And we'll go ahead and click on save and continue here. I'm calling it F3 instead of F10. It'll wait to load a little bit. And then we'll just want to scroll down and click on save and continue, but we will get this notification letting us know that we have to choose one. So instead of clicking the button to add a new group, instead what I recommend doing is just coming down and selecting one of the groups that you've already set up that's connected to the landing page you just made or another landing page that might also eventually drive traffic to this sales page. So in this particular instance, I'm going to select a, another one, F3 YouTube strategy, um, because I know that it's just sitting there and it, it's not really important. And we'll go ahead and click on save and continue. Again, we'll be able to select from different landing page templates. I'm just going to go back to book because we are going to scorched earth policy everything. So we'll come over here to actions. We'll click on remove content blocks, type in remove and remove. And then we'll come over here to blocks again. I'm going to go faster since we went so slow with the landing page and confirmation page. I'll drop in some text and then I will click on the image element here 
and then we'll scroll down and get a button. Now, when it comes to special, you can also drop in a Stripe integration. We'll talk about that when it comes to the checkout. So if you wanna jump straight into how do I get Stripe to work with this and what do I need to do in my Stripe account, uh, links in, of course, timestamps below to just jump ahead to that. So now that we have these elements, I'm going to go ahead and copy the text element. So I'll have a pre-headline and a main headline. And we'll go ahead and kick off our editing with the button. So we'll work our way up. And the button can say start now, download now, enroll now, check out now, uh, get access now, whatever, whatever now or today uh, you want to use. We'll just say enroll now. We'll come over here to settings and of course change the spacing. And then we're going to change the button because of course red means stop and we want red to be go, even though we used red on the landing page because it was about YouTube. Anyway, there we go. So we'll go ahead and change the button color to green because green means go. And we'll go ahead and exit out of that. We'll change it to open sans this time, just mix it up a little bit and change the font size of course. And then of course you can change the curves on the outside to change the way the button actually looks. And we'll go ahead and skip most of that for now. We'll just bring the spa V spacing down. And then we'll come over here to hover and we'll change the background color to, let's say, orange. Probably not the best thing from a psychology standpoint, but whatever. We'll <laughs> go ahead and click on save. And we can come over here and mouse over and you'll see that is orange. So let's go ahead and edit our video here. So we can go ahead and click on source. We have YouTube, uh, Vimeo, or Wistia. If you're using anything else, you can use a custom embed element. Although obviously it works a lot better when you have a video from one of these places. So we'll just drop in a random Vimeo link here and then we'll go ahead and click on save. And of course, if you want to change whether or not they have the play setting abilities, you're going to do that inside of Vimeo or Wistia. Um, if you're using YouTube, well then you kind of have no choice, right? But I definitely don't recommend using YouTube for, for a sales video. So let's go ahead and drop in our subheadline. So we'll go ahead and select our subheadline, drop the font down a little bit because it's a subheadline, italicize it, and then we should be good to go with our subheadline. Then we're gonna come up here and just give a headline or a name to whatever the presentation is. So in this be the instance, we'll just say it's an awesome YouTube strategy. Obviously you'll put a lot more effort into it. And then we'll go ahead and center it and we can of course up the font size to 30. That just seems like a good one for today. And then we'll change it to blue and we will go ahead and bold it. And once we have that, we'll change the spacing so it's not all the way up here by itself. And we'll bring in the spacing a little bit there and come back over to our subheadline and go ahead and align it center. And that's about all you need to do for your sales presentation, your sales page. So all of the traffic, of course, that from your rapport building sequence being, is being driven here. Let's go ahead and click on save and come over to the page settings. And we'll go to the background and remove a bar that's going to show up at the bottom uh, if we were to preview this. So we'll go ahead and exit that out and click on save. And now we can click on preview so we can see what it's going to look like on desktop. And you can go ahead and preview what it looks like on mobile as well. So we'll go jump back over to our page. It's all set and good to go. Let's go ahead and click on save and update here. Of course, we'll get a loading screen and then we'll be able to change our settings. If you decided to upgrade, you can change your domain and we'll go ahead and choose a favicon this time just so you can see how that works. So we'll go ahead and choose a image here. I'm gonna scroll down, choose one of our logos, click on select. And now when someone is going to our sales page, the little icon that's next to the name of the page in whatever tab browser that they're using is going to be this image. Now, when it comes to settings, I don't recommend doing anything with SEO. Totally skip share settings because no one's going to be sharing your sales messages. And finally, we have analytics and custom codes. And make sure when it comes to your analytics and your pixel, if you put anything in these boxes on your landing page, make sure you put it here as well, just so your tracking is complete. Again, link in the description to a full-blown Tag Manager video and playlist. So let's go ahead and click on save and continue here. And we can copy the URL and jump over to our browser. And this is what our sales page looks like. So at this point, if we jump back over to our diagram, we are right before the point of actually getting paid, right? And so now it's time to talk about the checkout page or the checkout process, depending upon what you decide to do. So I'll go through two different ways you can go about this. Both of them are going to be free. Uh, one is a direct integration with MailerLite. So we'll go with the non-direct integration with MailerLite first. 
And in looking at our diagram, we're going to be adding a link to a shopping cart software. So we'll be driving people away from MailerLite for this particular one, and then we'll go through MailerLite plus Stripe. So again, timestamps below if you just want to skip ahead to that. So we'll jump back into our MailerLite interface here. We're going to edit our sales page, go down to our button here, click on edit, and then this link right here, we can drop in a link to Thinktific, Teachable, PayPal, or Wave. Thrive and Samcart are actual paid solutions, but they're just options there if you're looking to upgrade in the future. But when it comes to Teachable's free plan or Thinktific's free plan, you can of course have a course and deliver digital products and you can go ahead and put your checkout page link here. And then if you decide to have services, then I recommend using Wave Accounting because they have a free checkout feature if you are in the States and I think a few other countries as well. So that does it for your checkout page if it's on another platform or service. But if you want to use MailerLite, you can get rid of the checkout page altogether and directly integrate with Stripe. So this is a really exciting new part. We haven't done this before, so let's go ahead and jump right in. First, you need to go to stripe.com. Hopefully Stripe works in your country. It, work, it works in a lot. And you can set up a free account with them. And once you go through that process, because they're going to ask you a bunch of banking, it's almost like opening a bank account. They ask you a lot of information, verify your identity, all that really boring stuff. Let's just go ahead and jump into once you actually have an account. So once you actually have an account, this is just one of ours, we can go ahead and click on products, and then you're going to click add product. So once you do, you'll go ahead and give your product a name, a description, upload an image. This isn't really important for what we're going to be doing in MailerLite, the, the image part. You definitely want to have the, the name and the description. And then we can come down here to pricing. I'm just going to drop in 95 bucks for this, and then this is going to be one time. So do make sure that you have the proper pricing structure here because MailerLite needs to know if it's a one-time or reoccurring when you're setting it up. And once you have those things, we'll zoom out here, you're all set and good to go. So we can click on save product and now we have our product page and information. And at this point, we can jump back over to MailerLite. We're good to go. So we'll jump back over to MailerLite here and we'll come up to our profile. We'll click on integrations. We will scroll down and we will click on Stripe. And once we do, we'll click on connect Stripe and if you're already logged in, then MailerLite and Stripe are already figured out, figured that out, or you'll be asked to log in. Then you can go ahead, go ahead and select the Stripe account that you want to connect. So if you have more than one, make sure you select the right one, right? And we'll go ahead and click on connect because I only have one, It'll load a little bit, and that's it. Now they're talking to each other and they're connected. It's really, really nice. No third party intermediaries anymore. They talk directly to each other. So let's go back over to sites and we're going to modify our sales page. So I'll just go ahead and edit our sales page here. We're going to replace our enroll now button because this is if we wanted to drive traffic away from MailerLite, but because we're going to keep it on MailerLite, we can actually use the Stripe integration. So I'll go ahead and click on Stripe uh, one time here and then we will go ahead and edit this element. So it will automatically pull in quite a bit of information from Stripe. So we'll, we'll pull in the information and then we'll get rid of it. We'll select Google Ads Campaign Builder, and then we're going to want to select the action Add to Group. So this makes sure that we can automate the delivery of our digital products. And I'll go through a free way to host it, although there is there is a huge downside. But hey, it's free, and, and that's our goal here. So we'll go and click on Add Group. We'll create a new group. I'll just create a, a demo group here. But this is going to be a group specifically of people who purchased, right? So we'll go ahead and click on Create there. And you'll see that MailerLite has automatically pulled in information from Stripe. And on the sales page, we really don't need it. So we'll go ahead and remove the image and we'll go ahead and remove the description. And once we have, we're going to want to go ahead and change the button text. Of course, we don't want it to be checkout. We'll say enroll now, and then we'll come over here to settings because the button is way too small, right? So we'll come over here to settings, or of course we'll change the font. And then we'll go, go ahead and up the font to 28. And then we will go to the background color. Of course, we're going to want it to be green. So we'll go ahead and make it green here. And then the hover color, we're going to change it from red because red means stop. And we'll change it to blue this time, right? So definitely probably should have looked more into uh, color psychology, right? That's something you, you can look at in terms of optimizing your conversions. And now when we hover over, you'll see that the enroll now button turns blue. Now, there is one more step that uh, MailerLite wants you to take with this button. 
So if we come over here and click on success message, you're going to want to link to your product here. Now, of course, we don't have a link yet, so we'll come back to this, but just keep this in mind. This is where we're going to link to the product. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here. And of course, it's going to tell me that it really, I really should have one, but that's okay. And I'm going to mouse over our old enroll now button and just delete it because that's all we needed to do. So I can come up here to click on save and update. And once I do, we are ready for our product delivery because we're ready to take payments. And now we need to actually deliver our service or deliver our digital product. So I'm going to go through using Google Drive to deliver whatever digital assets or products that you're selling. If you're doing a service, uh, then you're probably going to want to be using something like Wave Accounting so you get good notifications that someone just purchased your, your service and that you should reach out to them manually. So let's go ahead and jump back over to our diagram because we are on the last step. And this is where we are going to use MailerLite and of course Google Drive and just for timestamp purposes. So inside of our Google Drive account, you don't have to have a paid version of Google Drive to do this. We're going to click on new and then we're just going to create a new folder. We'll give the folder a name, whatever our product is. So I'll just call this demo and click on create. And then once we click on the folder, you'll see there's nothing in it, but when we click on to the options for our new folder, we're going to click on get link. And when we do, automatically it should be set to restricted. And so what we'll do is we'll click this drop down and we'll click anyone with a link and we can go ahead and copy that link. Now, I know I'm gonna get hate in the comments because wait, doesn't that mean anyone who clicks on this link can access it? Yes, does that mean that people who click on the link, download everything and then ask for a refund will still be able to keep the information that they just paid for and then I had to give it, essentially give it away for free? Yes, so that's a huge downside. I'm not pretending like this is foolproof. There's a huge downside of doing things 100% free. And even with a lot of paid courses out there, just, just sharing that even if you use something like Thinkific or Teachable, there are a lot of paid courses out there that still use Google Drive to share templates and share documents because it's not like someone's going to stumble across this, right? So it is a huge risk in terms of people being able to just take the content, um, but it is going to allow you to be get to get up and running without a huge amount of cost. So we'll go ahead and copy that link. I'll click on done. And I'm just going to quickly create a document to show how the sharing works. So of course you can right click, I'll say document, blank document. And then it's going to let you know that when you create a new file or you're bringing a new file into this folder, it's automatically going to be set to the same public sharing setting. So we can click create and share because we know we do want it to be shared. And I'm just using this as an example. If we come up here to share, you'll see that anyone with a link can view this. Now they can't edit it. They're going to need to copy a version to their own Google Drive so that they can use it or download it as a PDF or Microsoft Word file. And then if we go back to our folder, you'll just drop in anything that's included in your product into this folder. And of course, we now need to put this link back into MailerLite, or not back. We need to put this link in MailerLite. So let's jump back into MailerLite. We'll go to our landing page for a third time. We'll click on edit here, and we'll just go to our enroll now button. We'll go to settings, and we'll go to the success URL, and we will paste in the URL of our Google Drive link. Now this isn't going to be the only time we do this. So if I come over, go back over to Google Drive, just in case you're not sure where to share it, you can always click on the people icons and then you can copy the link and we'll go ahead and paste it in here. So this start now button, once they go through the payment process, will if they click on it, they'll immediately get what they paid for, which is pretty cool. It's 100% automated. We're going to go through one last email sequence here in a moment, but this ensures that someone can immediately get access to whatever they purchased without delay. So let's go ahead and click save. Of course, immediate means without delay. Well, how repetitive, right? Let's go ahead and save and we will exit this. So one last thing, you're a champion. You're an absolute champion. Let's go to automations here. I'm gonna go faster because you already know how to create one. So we'll create a workflow. We will name it customers, workflow trigger, when someone joins a group, what group do they join? They join customers, right? And that's the group that we set up, we created when we were setting up our Stripe integration on the sales page. So we'll go ahead and click on that. We'll go ahead and click save here. And then a plus button. We need an action because we need to take them out of our rapport sequence. They purchased, so 
we'll stop sending them report emails about something that they already bought, right? So for define action, we're going to remove from group and then we're going to select the group that they had been added to on the landing page. I realize I'm jumping between F3 and F10, but just pretend that they're F3 and F10 are the, the same thing here. So let's go ahead and click on save and continue. And now what we want to do is send an email, just like we did, what we did with the lead magnet, we want to send an email with a link to Google Drive. So they always have an email and they don't freak out like, oh, I didn't click the button on that page, now I can't access my stuff, right? Let's, let's save ourselves some, some uh, nasty emails. So we'll go ahead and give our email a name here. Just put in who it's supposed to be sent by and from. We'll go ahead and design the email. I'll go fast here because we've already done this. We'll go ahead and paste in our text here. Do make sure that you have a friendly reminder that you need to copy whatever's in the drive in order for to use it. So um, there are a lot of people who will not know that they actually need to make a copy in order to use the document that's been shared with them. And we can come over here and change our font size and color, or link color. And um, once we've done that, let's go ahead and add a the link to the folder. So we'll just highlight this, and then we can come up here to the link icon, and we'll jump back over to Google Drive one more time, and we will go ahead and copy the link, paste it in, we'll click OK, and we'll click Done Editing. And now we are sending out an email and we've completely automated the delivery process of whatever digital product there is. Even if it's just one file, I do recommend creating a folder because it's going to be very easy for you to update that folder in the future. And you're never gonna to have to worry about updating the link in the future either. You'll just change whatever's in the folder and you can even change the folder name and the link will be the same. So let's go ahead and do one more step here, just like what we did with the rapport building sequence, because we took them out of the rapport building sequence, there's now no automation to drop them into our broadcast list. And so we need to put them in our broadcast list. So let's click the plus button. We'll add a delay, set the delay to one day. We'll go ahead and click on save here. And then an action, we're going to copy them over to our broadcast list. So copy to group, just like what we did at the end of the rapport sequence drop them into the broadcast list, click on save here. And then of course, we're going to turn on our automation. And now whenever someone purchases through Stripe, they're going to be able to click through to the Google Drive folder right there on the page, right after they've paid, or they're going to be able to click through to the product that they just purchased via this email. So I'll go back out here. And that is all there is to it, to setting up a fully functioning automated sales funnel to deliver digital products. Wow, that was really, really, really long. So uh, if you got some value out of this video, please go ahead and hit that like button, comment below with any questions or feedback on how we can improve these because we do spend a lot of time and energy. There's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into creating these really long tutorials of losing my voice here. And we really do wanna make sure that they are valuable and helpful to you in getting your funnels up and running. So hit that like button, subscribe for more deep dive tutorials just like this one. And, uh, and ones that are a whole, whole lot shorter, I promise. And until the next, keep building the business you love.